we want to pray for Brother Jose and pray for Andy uh, up in Wisconsin. These are men out of the area, and there's someone else out of this. Uh, no, Brother Fred got back from Barbados. But um, let's pray for all of God's people yes. that we know about, that pray. we're conscious of, wherever they are and whatever needs they have. And let's remember Brother Raymond. Uh, Brother Raymond, do you have a time on the service for your brother Tony? Not yet. They're looking for Thursday. Thursday? All right. And we're going to continue to pray for the Westbury family, Diane, his wife, the children. Tony grew up in the church here with his mother. He was here when I came here in 1960 and received the church here. And my mother, Westbury, used to um, be one of the ones that served us in the family bowls on Sunday in the dining room. My Aunt Nora Bass, Mother Westbury, uh, Sister Elsie came in. Uh, and helped us at times, and uh, there were others as well uh, that joined us in there, and we had dinner in the old dining room here. It's the office now, but we had some wonderful Sundays there with those dear children serving us in the family bowls, I called them. Uh, uh, she always made chicken and dumplings, and it was really good. His brother Raymond's mother, uh, Tony's mother, the boy's mother, and uh, we want to pray for the family. And uh, then I want you to pray for the Edwards family this afternoon. Uh, Brother Woodrow Edwards, a recent new addition to the church, really haven't been here that long. Some of you don't know them, I don't think, too well. But uh, they used to sit over here on the left, my left, pointing down here. And uh, they're precious people, Sister Jeanette. Brother Woodrow Edwards. He's quite a colorful man, and his dress likes his cowboy boots, and uh, you know he likes to drive his Cadillac up to the church. And uh, he's a very fine man. He's very got a good mind. He's uh, made a lot of money in his lifetime, farming and managing. And uh, so, uh, brother, we got word this morning that before I left, went up to Tampa for a morning service up there coming back, but uh, we got word that uh, he had, uh, his brother passed away, and they'd had his services up in Orlando, and he was on his way back last night, and there was a telephone call made to his wife that uh, uh, he was uh, not sure where he was coming into Tampa, and uh, it's easy to get very mixed up coming that interstate forward construction going on and the 75 interchange and anyway she hadn't heard from him uh, from that time till I left to go to Tampa around 11 and then they put out an alert because he'd been missing 24 hours uh, but um, he uh, for his car for him and uh, no one had heard but I got a call just before we got back to the church here from his daughter they have found the car and they found Brother Edward, uh, Brother Woodrow, and they were taking him to the hospital to see if he was all right. Uh, that's all I know. But how many will pray for the Edwards family and ask the Lord to bless uh, Sister Jeanette and Brother Woodrow? Uh, I don't know what happened. I don't know the details. I just know it was a very frightening experience for the Edwards family, not knowing where he was and what had happened to him, and uh, that anything could happen. But thank the Lord he is alive, and he's been found, and his car has been found. And so we'll thank the Lord for that. Amen. 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 Give the Lord the praise for that. Thank God for that. And we want to just pray for all the rest of God's family. I'm a, I'm a very, uh, Brother Bernard asked me today on the way to Tampa what I was the most concerned about uh, with a church, he said, Brother Marlow, it seems your messages and what you've been saying have been very serious, and you've been in a very serious, uh, somber type of mood in your preaching. And uh, I said, I am, I am, because I'm very concerned about those 100 saints. And I just used that number last night. This church probably has 200 people that calls it their church home. 
but they're seldom ever here. We usually run about 50%, 60%, 65% of uh, the church that's here at one time. And I said, I'm concerned about, I just used that number 100 dedicated people that will dedicate themselves to the cost it will cost you and to the price you will pay in order to be a disciple, not a church goer, not a church attendant, not a person that uh, visits the church, but a disciple, one that is committed to the point of fanaticism, uh, to the point of being fanatical, uh, to your discipleship, that you would cultivate the gifts of God in your life as woman or man, and that you would make the sacrifice to uh, divest yourself, not invest yourself, but divest yourself of the attachments in this life that keeps you from being a disciple and learning and growing properly in your orbit, in your work, in your calling, um, that I'm not speaking about the wage earning life you live. You need that to give to the church. You can't properly give to the church if you don't work. And Paul said, a man that doesn't work, he should not eat. Um, I'm not talking about um, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of time. I'm, I'm talking about the attachments that this modern age, this world we live in, has successfully planted the seeds of the tear seed in the church. And Jesus said it would, and it has. You know, the words of Jesus are very real in the scriptures, and they're very sincere. And they're, they're given to us. They're written for our admonition that we may learn, we may grow, and we may prepare ourselves for the coming of Christ, whether it's in death, where he takes you as he has several of the saints. They're not here this afternoon. They were here a year ago, two years ago. Or whether it be in his coming, but that we be ready uh, for him, and we be prepared uh, for him. And Jesus said in the 13th chapter of Matthew, he said, here is a parable. He said, a man had a field, and there was a good seed in that field. Yes. It was sold. He had given the other parable of the 30, 60, and 100. And then he supplanted that parable and boosted that parable with this parable. And he spoke many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. Now quickly, Brother Steve, I move it on down. And, 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 uh, and when he sowed, some seeds fell. No, I don't, I, I don't want that. I want, I want the other parable. When, when, when he sowed, then while men slept, but while men slept, uh, that's, that's the essence of the other parable. But when men slept, while men slept, uh, what is it? Verse 25. Or I go down to verse 25. But while men slept, his enemy came. The enemy of this man that owned the field, uh, the householder, came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Now, later on, he explains this enemy to be the devil. Yes. Now, the devil is the carnal mind. Yes. That's one phase of the devil. There is an entity of evil spirits. Yes. That's another phase of the devil. There is a world of demoniac spirits. That's another phase of the devil. Um, the devil is not just the carnal mind. If I'm standing here with my carnal mind, I'm talking to you about how to build a house, I'm not of the devil. That is not the devil speaking. That is my natural mind with its intelligence discussing building a house with you. Uh, it's natural. It isn't spiritual. But it isn't the devil. The devil is the manifestation 
of the evil, rebellious, fallen nature that came into being in the garden when man disobeyed God and Satan or the serpent or the devil, which is the entity of evil outside the carnal mind. The carnal mind is not the devil. Uh, the, the carnal mind is the natural mind. It's your natural mind. It's the mind given to you by, uh, so I don't, I don't necessarily like to see people without they explain it. They, they have to explain it. I got up this morning and I looked in the mirror and I saw the devil. No, I don't think so. I got up this morning and looked in the mirror and I shaved. And I brushed my teeth. And I had nothing to do with the devil. And I wasn't looking at the devil. But, but when, when an entity of evil takes over your carnal mind and moves you from spiritual thinking yes. and from a spiritual life, then you that then Satan is working yes. and the enemy is abounding. Yes. So while men slept, the enemy came, and I want to give room for Brother Paul to get on his feet this afternoon. Uh, and, and Brother Paul, I'm going to do, try to do that. I get into this lesson too heavy. You're staying tonight, aren't you? Yes, sir. All right. Yeah, you, you're going to preach before the day is over again. But I, I'm in this lesson, and I'm taking it up from last night's lesson. I talked last night on a key scripture that too many don't understand it. In uh, Ephesians, the third chapter, the 25th verse, it said, But unto him be glory in the church throughout all ages unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end why did he say that world without end because the world you're living in has an end and the world every other generation lived in had an end how many worlds are there? Can you answer that? Do you know that biblically? All right, let's start with the antediluvian world. But before that, let's start with the Adamic world. The world that was from Adam's creation until the flood. How long was that? Possibly from Adam leaving the garden. That's when time is dated. Not while he was in the garden. But while he was leaving the garden, then after he left the garden, then time was dated. And it was possibly a thousand years of the Adamic world. And then God said, that's enough. There's going to be a flood. And I'm going to commission one man. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And Noah was the uh, Lord of the earth that uh, he was overseeing. Thank you. My um, Slavic lands have been giving me problems recently, and I thank you for that. For that ease, my son. Praise God. Blessed be the Lord. Lord, we thank you. Uh, when you get older, there's different things happen <laughs> in your body. And uh, thank you for that drink. Uh, you'll get a disciple's reward uh, for that. Uh, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, there was a flood that came, and that, before the flood came, that world that lived then was the Andalusian world. It came to an end. That was an end of that. Then the Jewish world started after Noah, not, uh, not immediately. There was another 500 years before the Jewish world. In the 12th chapter of Genesis, God spoke to another man. This time not Abel, this time not Adam, this time not Noah, but this time Abraham. God spoke to Abraham. And Abraham was a heathen man that lived with his father Terah in the land of the Ur of the Chaldees, the Chaldeans. And God spoke to this man, and God 
gave Abram a promise, a multiple promise. He said, Abram, later to become Abraham, the father of many. He said, Abraham, look up. I want your attention. Why did he say that? Because no, uh, Abraham had never looked up. Uh, you, you can't look up if you don't have a God. That's if it. all your gods are in this earth, that's where you're going to be looking. Amen. If all your gods are in this earth, that's where you're going to be looking. You never look up until you have a God that's above you. A God that's above the gods of the earth. That's why millions of people are involved in everything from the sports world on through to the uh, dancing world, to the entertaining world of 100 phases, because that's where their God is. That's what they make their God. Yes. And they, they live in this world, and, and the God of, of, of food, to some people, that's their God. Uh, meats for the belly and belly for the meats. Paul said, God shall destroy both it and them. Um, uh, their materialism, yes. philosophy, yeah. that, that's their God. That's why they don't ever look up or seldom ever look up. And that's why Hebrews 12 said, but looking unto Jesus. Why did he say that? To get your attention. So that you could get your attention of the gods of this earth and look unto Jesus because the God that most of us, the God of this world, is in this world. And so God then started the Jewish world and for 1,500 years through the genealogy of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12 sons, the 12 tribes, then uh, he, uh, the, the lineage of the Jewish world and the law, the Torah, continued, the Pentateuch, uh, continued until uh, Christ, 1,500 years. And then a little after Christ, 40 years, uh, that is 37 years more properly, uh, from Christ was 33 A.D., 70 A.D., the Jewish world came to an end. Abraham's world came to an end, the Jewish world. <coughs> Uh, it lasted 1,570 years, uh, but it came to an end with a Roman general taking swine's blood and swine's flesh in 70 AD and standing on the high altar of the demolished temple and a million Jews dead behind the walls of Jerusalem and in the fields. And he made two statements, Titus, the Roman general. He said, if there is a God, God has done this to a disobedient and rebellious people. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, uh, I declare the Roman Empire and Caesar the only God. And I, I, I spill the blood of the swine on this altar. And he burned a fire and the walls were burned, and the city was demolished, and the Jewish world came to an end. Now, the Gentile world started in the 10th chapter of the book of Acts, when Peter was asleep on the housetop waiting for them to fix him a meal, and the apostle Peter uh, suddenly saw a vision, and the Lord gave him a vision, and another world started called the Gentile world, which you and I have lived in. I was born in it. And it has lasted uh, now nigh unto 2,000 years. 2,000 years. Longer than the Jewish world. Longer than the Antediluvian world. Um, but it came, it's, it just like the other, it has come to an end. And yet people are trying to carry it on unwise people, yes. people that don't know God, right. people that don't study the Bible, people that read newspapers more than this, Amen. people that look at television more than this, people that don't attend church enough to get teaching like this, 
and know that this world you're living in is at an end. Now you can go out and buy it, build it up, shore it up, try to establish it. Houses, land, property, entertainment, your life, your body, your mind, uh, your time. Uh, give yourself to any of the uh, things you want to give it to. There's a lot to give it to, other than being a disciple. Uh, you, you can certainly find anything and everything you want to give it to uh, b besides being a disciple, a disciplined one. Uh, you, 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 you can get in the spirit of grabbing for every uh, minute you can get to get every dollar you can get uh, and say, well, I'm, I'm doing this for the church. And how much of that goes to the church? How much of that goes into the house of God? Uh, see, uh, but... Uh, but uh, and neglect the house of God, yes. neglect the work of the Lord. But but look, this world it isn't coming to an end. The Gentile world that started in the tenth chapter of Acts, yes. when um, Peter saw this vision of a sheep let down yes. with all kinds of four-footed and unclean beast upon it, um, and, and a vessel is sending unto him and a great sheet, and into the four corners, let down to the earth. And there was a voice that said, Peter, rise and eat. Uh, go ahead. Uh, we're, we're all manner. And there came a voice, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter's words back, because he was a Jew, he was a Jew, he said, not so, Lord. Come on down. He said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Come on. He wasn't telling the truth, but he said it anyway. Often we don't tell the truth when we make statements, but, but we say it anyhow. And he, and he, was, he said, I, I haven't done this. But then the Lord answered him back. Come on down to the steep. And, what, what, and, and the voice spake unto him again the second time. Did you know you and I are in trouble when God speaks to us the second time? Amen. If God has to speak to you twice on a matter he's trying to correct you in, you're in problems. You're in trouble. If God says to speak to me twice about something that he has said definitely, and he knows I've heard it, and he knows I understand it, I'm in a problem area. Because when God speaks to me twice, then it means he has to try to get it over in spite of my misunderstanding. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, what God hath cleansed, don't you call it uncommon, or common it is, or unclean. That was the beginning of the Gentile world. Peter immediately, when he understood, went down from the house top, went down uh, to the household of Cornelius, who was a Roman, uh, a, a Jew that is, believing, uh, a Gentile, believing God, and, and uh, when he went down, uh, they were, they, God had already spoken to Cornelius, yes. and that household, a band of Italians, yes. a band of Romans, yes. and they, they already were gathered together. Yes. When God works, he just doesn't work on one end. That's it. He's working on both That's ends. Right. That's it. And right now, if he could get the attention of the church, he would let you know and let me know he is not asleep in the world. You know why? You know why Iraq is Iraq. You know why Syria is Syria. You know why right now we got a Secretary of State spending millions of dollars, and Air Force One or plane similar running all over the Middle East, trying to connect nations together to deal with an enemy called is it ISIS, ISIS. Uh, uh, that, that that we fear. This mighty nation. This nation that fought two world wars. Korea, Vietnam, we're trembling at the word ISIS. Yes. 10,000 men. Our leaders are. Yes. I'm telling the truth. That's right. That's right. You've got terror in the hearts of people. Yes. People were on edge, 9 11, looking for a bomb to go off, yes. looking for a world to explode. The nation was upset. They've got us terrorized. You say, Brother Barlow, uh, they didn't do anything. They had us terrorized. They had a, our, our armies on alert. They had our navies on alert. Yes. 
had people on alert all over the country uh, because it's bringing terror in the heart. Now, who do you think is on working on that end? <laughs> oh, they're just doing that over there. That's just happening over there. I beg your pardon, it isn't just happening. Amen. This Bible declared it would happen yes, yes. long before it ever started happening. Yes. Because God, just like he worked on every end to get that righteous group of Italians together to hear what Peter had to say concerning the Holy Ghost, God was working on Peter yes. to obey him, yes. but he had them ready. Amen. Are you getting my point? Yes. yes. See, we are, there's a lot of things. I, 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 I'm kind of like Jesus right now. I'd like to come in the house and turn some tables over. Blessing, Lord. I'd like to get your attention. I'd like to be a minister that you don't listen to a cell phone more than you do me while I'm preaching. I'd like to be a minister that you may necessarily get up and disturb the whole church while I'm trying to give a lesson. Praise God. And while I'm trying to get a lesson across. Never mind how hot it gets or how cool it gets. Come on, brother. Yeah. Let the people swallow a little bit if they need to. Let them cool off a little bit if they need to. But for heaven's sake, we need to hear what God has to say. Amen. Amen. And if a man of God is only a fellow to get up and rattle his drums and his, his gums a little bit, and that's what he's become to the church, I need to step back from here. Whoa. I don't need to stand here and take your time or your ears, if I have become a man, that you can do five other things while the Word of God is going forth. Amen. Because I believe this is precious right now. Amen. Yes. yes. I believe this is the most important thing I can do. Yes. Yes. I believe I ought to be here every time I can to hear it. Yes. If it's become so common, I can ignore it. Or I think I have all the answers. <laughs> if a prophet no longer has an office, if a man of God no longer has a word that is going to guide the church, lead the church, help the church, instruct the church, then what is he doing here? And what meaning does the church have? Amen. And what does this have right here? Because the Bible said, at the mouth of his messengers, we would seek the Lord Amen. and believe a prophet and you'll be established. Amen, brother. So God is working on both ends of the line right now. Amen. He's trying to get the church to get busy getting their mind away from the sheep and the revelation of the sheep and get them aware that there is a waiting world right now Brother Marlow, can you say that by scripture? I can. Uh, Romans 8, uh, real quickly. Uh, there's a waiting world right now. Verse, uh, get it for me, brethren. That the whole creation, verse, what is it? Uh, the whole creation groaneth and travaileth. Uh, uh, let me get the verse here, if I can, real quickly. And Romans 8, um, 24, is it? 22. 22. Thank you. Uh, for we know that the whole creation groaneth. Groaneth. If they're not groaning now, they will be when five or six more heads come off in the Middle East. Amen. They're beheading people. I don't know how you feel about that, but I groan. Yes. It, it, I, I have a revulsion in me. I have a barbarians Amen. that are taking the head of the human being off. How barbarous can you be? How ignorant can you be concerning creation? Uh, I groan in that. We know. We know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth together 
in pain together until now. Well, why are they groaning and why are they